Hi, Feature Tyler here. Uh, I've been editing this project here, and uh, it turns out that um, I had screen recording in this video, uh, and to kind of show you how things played back, and it still stuttered, even though it, it didn't, the playback on the computer didn't stutter. So before you like freak out in the comments that um, doesn't look right or it's not playing back, it, it plays back smoothly, I, spoiler alert, I guess, plays back smoothly, except for when I say it doesn't play back smoothly. And I like, I'm pretty sure I call that out very well. So uh, that's all, just wanted to give you that heads up because um, that's kind of annoying. But um, I also still want to put this video out because it might help somebody. So. Anyways, that's all, and uh, we can start the video now. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Tyler Evans here. Thanks for checking out this video. So in, in my last video about this MacBook Pro, this is the 16-inch M1 Max with all the juicy specs listed right here. Um, I, I, I was kind of my, my first impressions video uh, of the computer, and um, as I mentioned in that video, I'm not like a... a a, a pretty like a high end like one of the really good like tech reviewers computer reviewers or whatever uh, I'm a filmmaker and I'm just like making videos uh, for filmmakers that might be interested in, in some of the stuff you might not found this very helpful and if you don't I'm sorry you can leave the video anytime you want to I mean stick around if you want I'd love for you to be here but um just that's that's the whole dealio so um yeah, so what I wanted to do in this video is uh, I, I kind of want to test out playing back just a number of different resolutions and, and all that kind of stuff. And the reason why, like playback for me is really important is because like that's a big part of editing is playing back a timeline. If you can't play a timeline back smoothly, like that makes your editing experience awful. And if you're spending this much money on a computer, then that might be something uh, that you maybe want to know. At least I know I would want to know that. So. Um, yeah, so like I said, the specs are, um, you know, the 64 gigabyte unified memory like I showed on the screen. So you can see that here, 64 gigabyte unified memory. Right now I am using 6.91 gigabytes of unified memory. The reason why I bring that up is I want to kind of at the end of this video, open it back up and kind of see what we're using uh, once we've kind of launched DaVinci Resolve and played back through all the clips and all that kind of stuff. So. Let's go ahead and launch DaVinci Resolve and we can kind of go ahead and uh, kind of jump into the, the whole topic of this video is playing back footage. So what I've got here is I've got a, a timeline and the, the timeline is set to, it is a 4K timeline. So go to timeline settings right here, 3840 by 1920. So it's, you know, a, a two to one aspect ratio the idea here is i've just got a number of different flavors of, of codecs and resolutions and compression ratios and all that kind of stuff and the reason why i have a uh, different like compression especially with red code raw is because a machine like this will play back a uh, higher compressed raw footage better than uh, you know the like three to one or five to one or even eight or ten to one compression uh, depending on the resolution, of course. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to test here and, and kind of see. And um, so I got this footage, like some footage from ArtGrid, some of it's from manufacturers' websites, uh, like Red and Blackmagic and, and Ari and all that. And then I have, uh, and then some footage that, that I've uh, captured as well. And we got a number of different cameras. We got Reds and you know, Ari and Blackmagic and DJI and Canon and all that kind of stuff. So. Try to get a, a, a good variety of footage. Um, if you're a Sony shooter, sorry, I don't have any Sony footage, but I know that like the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro handles that footage beautifully. So um, I don't see much point in testing that. Plus I don't shoot on Sony cameras. So um, that being said, um, how I've got this set up is um, first of all, we got timeline proxy mode set to off render cache set to none. So um, we're kind of just, you know, doing this like no help whatsoever from DaVinci Resolve. So what I've done here is basically you can see I've got two clips. I've got um, basically an ungraded clip and a graded clip. And what I've done with these graded clips is I've got the same node tree for every single clip for just a little bit of consistency. And this is kind of how I actually start off um, my my node trees to begin with. So um, I got some noise reduction, I got some color space transform nodes, uh, a couple of uh, 
correction nose and then a LUT there at the very end so um, we can kind of see uh, what's going on there and um, for the raw footage for the most part I'll, I'll try to call it out if I if I say differently I've got for the red I've got it set to full res premium that's how you get the, the highest quality out of that footage so um, that's what we're doing there got a set of to uh, wide game and RGB log 3g10 uh, kind of all the stuff you'd expect with uh, red code raw and uh, depending on if like for different flavors of raw uh, obviously these decode quality stuff is gonna be a little different so that being said um, what I what I do basically is just gonna play back the the ungraded clip and then right after that play back the the graded clip and um, it's kind of what we're gonna do so uh, if you don't like the note structure or if it's not as intense as you do then feel free to uh, click off this video and um, Sorry to see you leave, but otherwise, let's uh, let's go ahead and get into this. I will have each of the clips like in the chapter markers in this video, so you can kind of go down and find the camera or whatever that uh, suits your needs better. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and just kind of uh, start this off. So first of all, we got 18 to 1 compression from the red helium, and you can see here that this is 8192 by 4320. So we are at 8K resolution here. Um, so yep, so just so like it in like this clip here um, 6k resolution is from the Komodo um, and R3D so uh, I tried to uh, set up all these at, at the right you know the text and all that kind of stuff down below so you can kind of see but uh, Sometimes humans make mistakes. So if there is a mistake, I'm sure I will hear about it in the comments anyways. So yeah um, Let's just go ahead and start playing first clip so R3D 18 to 1 compression at 8K, uh, as I would expect, this plays back uh, perfectly fine. Uh, again, timeline proxy mode is turned off, so we're looking at the full resolution. And then with graded, this is with uh, noise reduction and all that kind of stuff uh, applied. So um, really impressive there. I mean, this is playing back like it's ProRes footage. It's pretty impressive. Uh, how well it's playing these back. So to give you an idea of the noise reduction, I probably should have mentioned that. Uh, I am using temporal noise reduction, two frames, faster, medium, and then chroma set to 35. The reason why I have those settings set up is because that is usually a really good starting point for pretty much anything that I shoot or I grade. That pretty much cleans up everything to my liking. Everyone has uh, different opinions. So um, again, that's just, uh, that's just what, what I use uh, going forward. If you don't like that, sorry, but this is my timeline. Uh, okay, moving up next, we have some um, uh, R3D footage from the Red Komodo set to low quality uh, in 6K 240 aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and play that. Again, it's playing back perfectly good. Um, no stuttering, playing back at 23976. It's looking good there. Um, put up a little MC up there. All right, and then switching over with that noise reduction, grade applied. Looked like it did a little hiccup there at the beginning, and now it seems to be playing back, uh, playing back much better. So, um, yep, yeah, that's, that's kind of good to go there. Uh, moving on, the next clip, we have Red Monster footage. This is from Red's website uh, at 10 to 1 compression at 8k resolution so um less compressed than 18 to 1 obviously so uh it, it's gonna have you know the computer's gonna have to work a little bit harder to uh, to decode the footage kind of on the fly so let's go ahead and play this back and as you can see we are kind of getting like starting off at about 14.9 frames per second and it's kind of choppy and now we have it's still it's still not playing that back really well so um yeah, that's 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 that. If we let's drop down to half resolution and see if that plays it back any better. So this would be kind of like playing back at 4K resolution. So uh, we play it there, and now that's starting to play back really smooth. And even on um, even on the graded footage with the noise reduction applied, uh, it's playing it back perfectly smooth. And that's at timeline half resolution. So if you're in a 4K timeline. Um, 
I don't think you're gonna really notice that much of a difference of quality unless you're like on an 8K or 6K monitor or something like that. But even if you have a 4K monitor, you shouldn't notice that much of a difference when editing. So um, that's pretty impressive that you could still, you know, view it in, in 4K. So, um, so that's that. Let's move on because I don't want to make this video like you know, 10 hours long. So uh, let's move on. So that's some, some red code footage. That's uh, pretty impressive. Um, it's a really great codec to work with. Uh, so there's that. Okay, next up, make sure that we are back on uh, timeline proxy mode off. Okay, next up is some 8K footage from the uh, R5. This is the the raw light or whatever they call it. So um, like here, we've got Canon raw video codec. 8192 by 4320. So we got that going on. All right, so let's go ahead and play. And this is all with a text overlay over all of the, the clips. And that's something you need to like keep in mind. Like those, that usually, that's usually not good for, for video. Like I know my, my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro does not do a good job with uh, as soon as you put text over. So, all right, let's go ahead and play this one. This is ungraded raw and it is, well, it's, it's playing it back, no issues at all. And that's pretty impressive because this is less compressed than 10 to 1 R3D, I believe. Could be wrong on that. And then graded here, starting to hiccup a little bit and it catches up. So that's pretty cool there we'll wait till this clip ends and then uh we'll jump into the color page to kind of show you something okay i think that's enough playing back so one thing i have noticed with uh with canon footage is if you are set up in full res resolve or project setting uh it seems to be just fine but if you go to full res canon I haven't really, I haven't noticed a difference in the image, but I have noticed a performance hit. Um, now with red code footage, uh, you have to full res premium to make sure that you're getting the highest quality out of it. Uh, but I haven't noticed full res Canon and DaVinci Resolve making that much of a difference, except that you can like change your ISO and stuff. But if we go back and play this clip back, you can see that the performance takes a huge hit when playing back in that uh, that that decode setting, um, again from an image quality standpoint, I could be completely wrong here, but I've not noticed any difference uh, between Resolve and Canon decode quality, except for the fact that with Canon decode you can change the ISO. So if that's really important to you, then um, you're gonna you know you have to deal with that. But going back to regular uh, decoding use Resolve, it plays back perfectly so um there's that all right let's move on this is 1dx mark 3 footage this is the raw light footage here and um ungraded as you expect um it's looking fine um nothing to i mean it's a terrible clip but uh, and then this is actually really surprising uh you would expect a lower resolution to to play back better but for some reason i guess can't or davinci Blackmagic Design or whoever just has no love for the, the 1DX Mark III, it just does not play back very well at all. If we turn, turn noise reduction off, then it plays back perfectly fine. So noise reduction seems to really, really mess up 1DX Mark III. So um, basically like me and, and Griffin Conway, pretty much the only people I know that shoot raw on the 1DX Mark III. So the two of us are going to have... Um, have a problem with that so no noise reduction for us all right so moving on we have uh, just some r5 footage um this is just 10 bit 422 the h.265 that every kind of computer hates this is 4k i don't know why i, th I thought i had 8k but i don't uh, but i only rented the camera for like a couple days so um this is playing back um this is playing back in, in real time um it, it's just not much going on. I don't really know why I use this clip to begin with, but and here's graded. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, it seems to be playing back just fine, um, as you would expect. So, uh, not much to say here. Okay, let's move on to some DJI stuff. Uh, DJI is notorious for having, uh, I wouldn't say terrible codecs, but computers don't like their codecs. So, um, that's uh that's 
that's a problem. Now, this first one is from the DJI Inspire. I believe it's the X7. This is uh, this is with the raw license, so it shoots in Cinema DNG. This is at 6K resolution. So if we go over here, just to show you, file 6K, you know, 6016 by 3200 and DNG. And the only thing I'm doing with these clips, are like I'll zoom in so it fills up the screen. Um, but um, 6K resolution, no computers ever that I've had has played this back smoothly. So um, let's go ahead and do uh, ungraded first. And this is playing back 6K Cinema DNG raw perfectly smooth like that's super impressive I should do a whole video just on this because that's so impressive this pretty much chokes up like every other computer that I've ever used out there so uh, that's that and let's go on with a great applied and like a yeah we're doing really good there again I mean there's no drop frames or anything like that so uh, super super impressive and again and see here, I've got noise reduction applied. I've all the stuff, same same nodes, all that kind of stuff here. And if we even play it inside of the color page, which is even more demanding on the computer, it still plays it back perfectly fine. This is insane. All right, moving on to the next one. This is probably a codec that more people are used to editing. This is from the DJI Air 2S. This is their 10-bit 5.4K uh, D-Log. Uh, in an mp4 wrapper so I'll play this back ungraded this was an awesome campsite this was on a trip camping okay so pretty good there uh, I, I'm not seeing any drop frames here and now with graded Still, I'm not seeing any drop frames, and I'm mentioning that because uh, maybe the screen recording might like be choppy or something like that, but I just want you to know that like it's good to go like to my eyes. So uh, that's pretty impressive while screen recording. Alrighty, next up we got some Airy Raw. I got this from the RE website. So um, just to test that out and, and go to the inspector, this is the RE Raw codec at 3842 so UHD so playback ungraded so I'll show you right here real quick there's no there's no grades or anything applied so play that right here And then now we got the graded. Now this shot is static in the beginning. It's not getting choppy, just to clarify. Again, this is the same kind of node tree, you know, in the color space transform, I had to change like the input gamma and all that kind of stuff, but everything else is pretty good. We're not looking necessarily at the grade here. We're just looking at the performance and uh, that's that's pretty, pretty impressive. All right, so moving on, let's look at some uh, Blackmagic RAW from the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So this is an eight to one compression at the 240 aspect ratio uh, from the camera. And then looking at it graded, Once again, it's playing it back perfectly fine. Again, on my computer, I don't know if screen recording is gonna do anything differently, but playing back perfectly fine, perfectly smooth, um, just super impressive. All right, next up, we got uh, some Ursa Mini Pro 12K footage. This is the stuff that uh, John Brawley shot for Blackmagic for the marketing material. Uh, this is ungraded. This is Q1 compression. So um, this is like pretty, like this is not very compressed at all so um really impressive that we're playing 12k resolution back in in real time and the timeline mode is again no proxy mode it's set to off again with a grade that same node tree applied this is just this is just super impressive
Now this next clip uh, right here, I had to kind of, you see all these little right here. I had just kind of loop them because the, the clip was like really, really short. But what I wanted to do here is I really wanted to show a 12 to one compression uh, of 12K footage on the, uh, from Blackmagic uh, Ursa Mini Pro 12K because different compression ratios have different, and this actually be a good thing to show like it jumping from clip to clip too. So, um, so got a little bit uh, kind of just looping and then it'll go into the graded. All right, and then we jump into the graded and it's playing back perfectly good. If it looks choppy to you, just keep an eye on this little flag or, or ribbon or whatever that is uh, floating around. And that is, it kind of shows you that it's it's playing back perfectly smooth. Again, to my eyes, I don't know what screen recording zone, but this is playing back perfectly good. And then lastly, we have 8K ProRes uh, HQ 10-bit uh, 422. So we'll go ahead and play that back. Again, no issues at all. And graded, same no tree. Um, and this thing's playing back perfectly fine. Um, that's super interesting. You know, I'm actually, I actually wanna test this out too. Let's see if we can put multiple 8K clips all together. All right, see how this plays these back. Okay, that definitely struggles to play four streams of 8K ProRes back in full resolution. Let's go to half resolution and see what that does. Still stutters quite a bit, and then seems like it's actually starting to play back okay. Still dropping some frames. Now let's go to quarter resolution. The reason I'm doing this is you might have a, a four cam setup where you're, I don't know, maybe you got an edit where you have four, whatever, you know. Quarter resolution, it plays it back perfectly fine. So um, yeah, that that's actually pretty impressive. On my M1 MacBook Pro, I did a Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro uh, review with this camera right here and I had uh, four boxes just like this of uh, 6k raw and like it it like it actually failed on a render one time because it was it was so intense okay and one last thing that i want to look at is the activity monitor because at the beginning i think we're at like six gigs or something like that of memory use so let's see what we're at now so now we are at 37.22 gigabytes so um to answer the question do you need to upgrade to 64 gigs. Uh, in my case, this is exactly why I upgraded to 64 gigs. We're not that far over 32 or whatever the other one is, but um, it's it's over enough. I mean, it's it's utilizing 37 gigs of, of the unified memory. And that, you know, I'm obviously screen recording all that kind of stuff, but um, you can see like, that's why I, I upgraded everything that I could. It's kind of like a tripod, like, when I went and got a tripod, I got the tripod that could hold the heaviest camera with a 75 millimeter bowl. That means nothing to you, sorry. But a lot of my cameras don't even hit that capacity close, but like if I'm gonna rent a, a camera for a specific project, like a, a, a bigger RED or RE package or even like a Canon C700, like I've run those cameras on that this tripod before and I'm really glad that I had that tripod because that was something else that I didn't have to rent as part of the package. So same thing, same thing applies here with this computer. I went for 64 gigabytes of memory because I didn't wanna have to worry about um, kind of maxing it out. And as you can see on the, the activity monitor, I was running at 37 gigs. So um, hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, kind of do a render out, kind of 10 second long each of these clips. Kind of give you the results right here to show you how long each of these um, clips took and um, all that kind of good stuff. But otherwise, uh, I'm pretty much done with this video. I hope you found it helpful or useful or anything like that. Uh, if you did, maybe consider hitting subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. and. Um, 
that's uh, that's pretty much it. So here are the results of how long these 10 second clips rendered. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So just keep that there for a second for you to look at. So. Okay, I, I, you can probably hit pause. So uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. I will uh, see you in the next one. Peace.